Time with Teresa. I'm your host, Teresa Westbrook. And again, we are filming on location at the Irving Bible Church for the great Christian Media Conference. And it is my delight to introduce you to actor and producer Benjamin Dane. Welcome, Benjamin. Hey, Teresa. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm so glad that we have this opportunity to sit down and chat a little while. I am, too. It's been, I mean, we tried to be, I guess we've been trying to to get to this point for a while now. Yeah, absolutely. And, And we still won't even get the full interview in that I want to get with you, Benjamin, but we'll get a lot to share with the viewers today. So to start with, I want you to go ahead and share a little bit about your uh, professional background with our viewers. Okay, well, let's see. Um, I'm a producer, actor. I've been, I started actually acting in commercial, or I'm sorry, community theater. (laughs) Did some commercial work too, but I started with commercial theater, started doing, doing a lot of stage work. And then that kind of transitioned into more commercial, industrial, and film and television work. But, uh, and then I started producing a little while ago, and and that was amazing uh, Mm -hmm. because it really gave me the opportunity as an actor. Because as an actor, you kind of, you're given a script and you have to perform that character. But as a producer, you really get a chance to have a little bit more power Mm -hmm. and you get a chance to do the productions and the stories that you're most passionate about. That's awesome. Well, um, let's talk a little bit now about give a brief testimony of how you came to call Jesus Christ your Lord. Well, you know, I was brought up in church and we went to church as kids and, you know, I I think there's that that um, you have your covering of your family and your faith is is covered uh, with your family. But then you get out into the real world and that's when the real test happens. Um, I mean, I had such a foundation, which was really wonderful. But when I went to college, it was um, it was another world and you're kind of trying to figure out who you are and 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 all mm-hmm. that and i think i got caught up in a lot of stuff i shouldn't have uh, um and i was i mean honestly i was um sleeping around and doing some horrible things and drinking and um and just not living for the lord at all mm-hmm. not going to church it was just like wheels off yeah uh, it was kind of scary but um, you know, when I, f- I got my first staff position outside of um, college, and that was amazing because it really put me into the real world. And I was invited to church several times by someone that I worked with. And I, I didn't go, but I was, in, I was in an area that I didn't know anyone. I was away from my family, about 13 hours from my family. And so, you know, as a person that's just getting out in the world and, and, and really understanding and working uh, at a young age, because I was, I believe I was about 20 years old when I um, started my first staff position. And it was a lot of pressure. And um, what happened is um, I was in a, a car accident and, and almost, almost died in the car accident. It was a really traumatic thing. Uh, but I rolled the vehicle, and um, it wasn't until afterwards that I started realizing that I, I, I wasn't close to the Lord, and I, and I realized that um, I could have lost my life, and where would I be? Where would mm-hmm. eternity be for me? Mm-hmm. And it really hit me hard, um, but I had about uh, 21 stitches, and um, and amazingly, I didn't break any bones or anything like that, but uh, the Lord was totally protecting me through this, but, but through that, that situation, I had a nervous breakdown and right after the accident and uh, had all this pressure on me uh, at work. And so it was the pressure at work. It was the accident. It was all these different things that kind of built up. And, and I just kind of realized that um, I couldn't do it myself. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I had my life all planned out. I was like, I'm going to do yeah. this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. And I had my, my whole life was planned. Mm-hmm. And I realized that, you know, the Lord had another plan, but, but also knowing that, um, you know, it says in Proverbs that submit your plans into the Lord and he will see that they succeed. Well, I wasn't submitting my plans to the Lord. Right. I had my own agenda mm-hmm. and I had my own situation that I wanted mm-hmm. to establish. And so, um, but it was through that mm-hmm. that I came back to the Lord and, Praise God. and really just um, had a whole different um, um, kind of knowledge of who he really is mm-hmm. and what he wants for my life. Mm-hmm. 
Well, and there's such a big difference being raised in church, being born into a church yeah. family. Everyone has to get to the place where they discover Christ for themselves. Yes. For themselves and be convinced for themselves and welcome him into their heart. So that's what happened with you. And so now that's been how many years ago? You've been serving oh, the Lord now how many years? I, you know, I've, I've been really serving the Lord for, gosh, I, I guess, uh, well, over 20 years now. Oh, praise yeah, God. Yeah. And when you have that real experience, you know, you can't go back. I mean, you can struggle, you can fall, but you cannot go back when you really know Christ. Well, it's and it's a constant growth. I mean, you never, I mean, on, we're only on this earth for a certain time, and we really every day it's a new challenge every day you, you need the lord in your life you need him guiding you directing you showing you what um where, where you need to go i mean it's 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 so important to have the holy spirit in your life and it's like i know christ when he spoke in parables many mm -hmm. times but you know when even he healed people if you look in the word of god I mean, one time he spoke the word, one time he rubbed yes. mud in mm -hmm. someone's eyes yeah. and said, you're, you know, you're healed and go wash off mm -hmm. in the, in the, in the, in the, in the pond and, mm -hmm. you know, in the fountain. Mm -hmm. Um, but every, every time it was something different and, mm -hmm. but he was led by the Holy spirit, mm -hmm. you know, and we have to be led by the Holy spirit because the Lord is constantly, he's new. He's, he's, his mercies are new every morning. Yes. You know, it's, 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 it's a new day. Every yes. day is a new day. Yes. And so we have to, we got to tap into his word and tap into what he's saying to us. Amen. That's so good, Ben. That's so good. Well, now, Ben, you are the chapter leader at the Christian Media Association in uh, for the Dallas chapter. Mm -hmm. uh, tell our viewers a little bit more about that and welcome them out to one of our meetings out there. You know, CMA is a wonderful organization. I'm so blessed to be a part of it because it is tremendous. It's, it's uh, believers encouraging other believers in the, in the media. If you're just um, really kind of wanting to know about media, film, television, um, acting, producing, directing, writing, whatever it is that your interests lie, you really do need an organization like this to encourage you, to, to train you, to introduce you, to network with other believers that are in the industry. Um, it's such a great, wonderful program, I think, yes. for, for anyone who is mm -hmm. thinking about going into media, even if you're in church and you operate mm -hmm. the sound equipment, Absolutely. Or whatever mm -hmm. that is, you know, it's, it's important to be around like-minded people who understand you. And, you know, sometimes as an actor, you know, my family doesn't quite understand <laughs> me or, or what I do. And so it's real important that you're with like-minded people that mm -hmm. do get it, mm -hmm. that understand it, mm -hmm. and that can encourage you in the Lord, you know? Mm -hmm. So yes, mm -hmm. it's, it's a wonderful organization. I encourage you guys to come out. We have a meeting, um, I think once every quarter, about four times a year. Mm -hmm. And then we have, we just, this is our first conference, the CMA mm -hmm. conference mm -hmm. we're, we're, uh, we're doing this year. Mm -hmm. And every year it's gonna continue on, but I would just really encourage you, if, if, if not, if you can't be there, uh, call a friend, <laughs> uh, because there's just great speakers and, and training and education, and it's all free, the events are Absolutely. all free. Yes. So Currently it's a, it's they're a free. great thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah, we're really empowering people at the chapters, and now we're empowering people at the, the conference, and you led uh, our Faith and Film panel discussion last night with some great people oh, in the entertainment wonderful. industry. Yeah. Uh, just share a little bit about that with them. Oh my gosh, last night was incredible. We had uh, Michael Caine here who, um, I mean, he started two different film festivals, and um, actually more than that, he's mm -hmm. been involved with encouraging people in independent film, but he's a film filmmaker himself and then um you know i just found out he was executive producer of jobs with ashton kutcher that film about steve jobs um and then um, um curtis wallace mm -hmm. was here who's an attorney he's worked with td jakes and mm -hmm. just a tremendous man and uh, and now he's um offering legal services to anyone who's in the industry great guy uh but worked on sparkle with whitney houston and and so many others um, and then we had Chad Gunnarsson, whose mm -hmm. uh, film is uh, Unlimited is coming out, I think, in 2015. And so he talked about uh, producing and has worked with huge stars and huge projects. And um, let's see, who was the other one that we had? 
uh, oh, Danny Corrales, yes. Beyond the Darkness, his film about spiritual warfare is coming out and it's tremendous. But um, we had such a great time because these guys have so much knowledge and it was just, I, I just, it was wonderful for me just to sit mm -hmm. there and talk to them and, and find out um, their vision and their passion and why it is in faith-based uh, entertainment. Because, mm -hmm. you know, really, we if you have that desire, if you have that passion, that vision for faith-based and, and doing quality productions, um, you know, I want to know. I want to know all about mm -hmm. that. I want to know uh, what drives these men to do what they do mm -hmm. um, because it encourages myself and hopefully it encourages, encouraged other people there too. Oh, absolutely. And we opened it up for questions in the audience. And mm -hmm. so, yes, it was very encouraging. It was powerful. And uh, thank you for your participation with CMA. We're you blessed bet. to have Benjamin Dane as well with <laughs> CMA. So praise God My for that. Yes. Uh, let's talk briefly about the film that you produced, Beyond the Farthest Star. I was privileged to see this last year uh, for uh, uh, select opening and it was a wonderful beautiful uh, film with a powerful message I'd like some updates on that if you're able to share any updates with the viewers okay, okay. <laughs> so beyond the farthest star is this amazing story um, really about a family's journey and they're in ministry the family um, is a pastor's family but there's secrets there's lies there's all these things that come to the surface in the film and it is such a wonderful film about brokenness and the restoration of the brokenness. Um, and it's such a contemporary, wonderful story that I think a lot of people have related to. And it's not your typical faith-based film. It is faith-based, but mm -hmm. it's, it's so real and so authentic. I think people are going to get something out of it they've never thought possible with a faith-based film because the story is so good the actors are so amazing todd terry sherry lee uh renee o'connor barry corbin billy mcnamara and tyler corey i mean all these incredible actors that give such a wonderful performance but it really does take uh faith-based uh, entertainment to a different level and i'm excited to be a part of that please support it um, we probably will, will be releasing in about 50 theaters at first and then kind of start expanding mm -hmm. after that and going into other uh, markets. But so um, and it's real important um, for you guys to go to beyond the farthest star dot com mm -hmm. and connect with us. Mm -hmm. You can put in the actually uh, you can put in your um, email address. And what that does is in your zip code, it votes. You, you put a vote in for your city because right now we're trying to decide what cities we're going to release in. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's real important that we have. And right now I think we have about 440 cities that have registered uh, that wanting to really see beyond the farthest mm -hmm. star. So um, some cities more than others. I mean, mm -hmm. we have a top 10 list of the, of the top 10 cities and those are probably the cities we're going to release in mm -hmm. first. So mm -hmm. if you're in you know, Paducah, uh -huh. wherever USA, uh -huh. Uh -huh. you know, make sure you vote for your city to, to get beyond the farthest star because uh, our distributor right now is wanting to know what cities those are going to, those yeah. are going to be. Uh, but back when I went to the opening, I want you to share, remember, uh, the theaters were packed Yes. and you were up against some very competitive films and y'all grossed the highest in it you at one of those theaters to share a little bit about yes, that. Yes, we, um, we did a test release back in October of last year of the film in the Dallas marketplace. And, um, we actually was number one and number two in the theaters that we released in. So it was really wonderful. We did a really per, a great per screen average. Um, so that was a good indication for our national release. We kind of did it because we wanted to see how the pu public would respond. So it was a very good response. And um, I think opening night, uh, Carrie, you know, the, the film uh, was out, uh, the horror film Carrie, and we knocked it out of the largest auditorium <laughs> Praise God. in the theater. Praise so that was God. So good. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was a 600 seat auditorium. And, and at what happened is that the, the tickets through Fandango just kept coming in and coming in and coming in. And so we, we started out, I think, at a 200 seat auditorium that, we, that they moved us up to a 300 seat. Then they moved us to four. And finally they said, OK, we're moving you to the largest auditorium in the theater. So that was wonderful. It was such a great thing. What a testimony, oh, you know. Yeah. Yeah. To, to know that the Lord is moving in filmmaking mm -hmm. and to see that and to see Beyond the Farthest Star 
or on the the big screen with all those people that night it was really amazing and we're probably what we're going to do is we're going to tour and we'll go out into the cities we're releasing into in march and probably probably february and march and we'll bring in some of the stars and myself and andy labrizi who's the writer director of beyond the farthest star we'll all be there mm -hmm. and so it's it would be really wonderful Great. Maybe I can get some interviews at that at that location, <laughs> yes. too. It'll be my delight. Okay, well, Ben, uh, I know that you've played many roles. You've probably played a leading man, the good guy and the bad guy, or the good, bad, and ugly. Well, I want to know what's your favorite role to play and why. Oh, my gosh, Teresa. <laughs> well, let's see. You know, it's funny because I've, I've played a, a variety of roles. I played um, uh, one of my... I guess one of my uh, favorite roles is playing Christ. I've played mm -hmm. um, the Lord um, several times, and it is it is challenging, but it is so moving to 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 be able to play Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. um, but I started playing in, in passion plays, and um, and it was so tremendous for me because I you really understand the compassion of the Lord, um, and it's hard to explain. But um, there was a time that I was on the cross in a production. Literally, I felt this jolt of electricity go through my body. And I know it was just the anointing of the Lord. Mm -hmm. But um, you've got to be really prayed up. and You've really yeah. got to be there. Yeah. Because it's such a huge, probably the biggest role ever to mm -hmm. undertake is the role of Christ. And mm -hmm. to know that compassion and that, and that drive and the vision that, that he had to die for humanity you know, so that was an amazing um, time for me. And then um, a few years ago, I got a call from a producer friend of mine, and he called me. He says, "Well, uh, uh, Benjamin, I want you to play the Antichrist, <laughs> and you're the only man for the job." And I was like, "Wait a minute, <laughs> what does that mean?" <laughs> right? So, um, but um, it was all shot in Israel, and it was called The Dark Prince. Mm -hmm. And we shot for 10 days in Israel, and it was such an incredible experience because I'd never been to Israel. And we shot in Jericho and Bethlehem and Tel Aviv and all these amazing places, the, uh, the Temple Mount, um, all these amazing places. And um, I was just in awe. It was just an experience I'll never forget. But uh, it's funny because the art director, we were shooting, right? We were shooting this, these intense scenes that I had the – I had the reptilian contacts on, you know, <laughs> to play the Antichrist and the devil, and it was just all this stuff. And and um, I'm in this black cloak and 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 all this, and and so we're talking. I'm talking with the art director, who's from Israel, and they're talking about their next thing that they're going to shoot, and they were looking for an actor to play Jesus. I said, "Well, I played Jesus." <laughs> <laughs> they're like, what? Because I can't picture that, you know. I can't picture that. So I thought that wow. was. So I played, yeah. and then I played everything else in between. I played Jesus. I played the devil, Antichrist. I played everything else in between too. But you know, I think you've you've done it all. When you can say you played both those roles, you know, both ends of the spectrum, and apparently very well. If you couldn't believe you'd ever played Jesus before, that's very well. Well, then I have friends. I have friends that I that I tell that I did the antichrist that saw me in the production they're like no <laughs> there's no way you could never play that part <laughs> so yeah it's fun, it's fun that's cool i love that i just love that well now uh i understand another one of your many talents is painting tell us a little bit oh. about that well you know uh, illustration i love to draw and i it's always been such a really neat passion um from since I was a young kid, um, just love to draw and doodle, and and it's really um, the talent that I don't have to work hard to do. Oh, you know, nice. it's not a challenge for me at all. Um, it just comes natural. Um, so, like acting, I I love because it is a challenge for me, and and it's a challenge to go there and to go deep into a character. But illustration and, and art has always been such an easy thing. And so I went to school really for that and started acting later, you know, after I finished a lot of my schooling. Um, but that's probably one of the things that, that I want to do when I get older. And, there's, and it's really funny because a lot of actors are 
illustration. They, they love illustration. They love painting. And um, uh, um, Anthony Quinn, for example, uh, James Cameron, who, um, who of course you guys know uh, for Titanic and a lot of other mm-hmm. films, mm-hmm. but um, he's an art director and, and was an art director and an artist. Mm-hmm. And you know there are a lot of actors that are artists, so it's kind of neat that yeah. uh, that because it's it's such a creative outlet. You know, it's an expression of what you have inside. And the, I think that the most artists will say this, but if they can't express themselves, they they get very frustrated because they it's within them and it has to come right. out. And so art is like that. And one of these days, I guess my, my hope is that, that um, I'll have a career in acting um, and producing enough to where I can paint on the side and start doing the the thing that I the, the other thing that I love to do, <laughs> you know. Yes, that would be a blessed life. Awesome. Yes, it would be awesome. Well, you know, the desires of the righteous, God grants those. Amen. You know that. I believe you that. You know that. So hang in there. Hang <laughs> in there. Uh, well, now I'm just curious. Do you have any nicknames like Big Ben, Jittle Ben? <laughs> <laughs> You know, I have. It's funny. I have a. I have a family name, a nickname. Um, when I was a kid, um, I loved to rock. I guess, and I would rock back and forth, back and forth. And so, I rocked so much that my my dad would would rock me in a chair, and um, he'd fall asleep, and I'm still rocking. You know, <laughs> as a little <laughs> baby, I'm still rocking, and uh, my dad's long gone. But um, but they bought me a little rocking chair. And it was one of those little mini rocking chairs. I still have it to this day. Oh, I have nice. my little rocking chair nice. at home. But um, but I would rock and rock, and I would rock so hard, I'd rock and fall over and get back in the chair and start <laughs> rocking again. So um, my my parents started calling me Rocker <laughs> because I rock so much. And so my nickname is Rock or Rocker. And so my family, and I just went to a family reunion last weekend, and uh you know, it's uh, it's it's funny because my wife came with me, and and they're all rock, rocker, you rock, <laughs> rock, and and you know they don't call me by my my legal mm-hmm. name, so mm-hmm. it's funny. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's that's always been a family strong nickname. Awesome. Well, that's cool. That's cool. I like that you still have the little rocker too. I'm kind of <laughs> sentimental myself, so I totally get that. Yes. So that's wonderful. All right, now so we're going to move on to some fun things, changing gears here. Uh, can you do any impersonations? Oh gosh. Okay. Let's see. Um, I used to be able to do John Travolta pretty well. Let's see. <laughs> so, uh, so tell me this, Teresa. <laughs> we're here. We're here right now. And um, I just want to tell you mm-hmm. that I'm loving your show here. Oh, <laughs> it's great. It's great. And uh, you know, um, do you know Sandy? No. Oh, of Greece. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So Sandy and I, we had this thing, you know, we had this thing, and uh, we uh, we we sang a little bit, we danced a little bit, but it was really fun. <laughs> yes, I love Greece. I love Greece. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. How about some accents? Could you share with our viewers? You're watching Time with Teresa in an accent. Hello, I'm Benjamin Dane, and you're watching Time with Teresa. <laughs> I love that. I love that accent. I love it. Well, I do my shows all with a Texas accent. <laughs> you know, I, and, I, and you do that so well. Uh, thank no one you. would ever know that you're from Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> you're so real. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate it. I've, I've really so worked. I've worked on it for many years. I think I've perfected <laughs> it. <laughs> Oh, that is so fun. That is so fun. Now to uh, another fun question. Which animal do you think best describes you? <laughs> oh, my gosh. These are crazy questions. Where does she come up with this? I'm stuff? preparing you for the late night shows. <laughs> <laughs> animal. Hmm. Wow. Gosh. You know, I've never really thought about that. Um, uh, when I, I played um, Aslan in the Chronicles of Narnia. Um, on stage and um, that was really interesting because you had to uh, Aslan is a lion in uh, C.S. Lewis's Chronicles of Narnia when we did one of the books live and that was really interesting because you had to um, I I watched cats big cats I watched lions and tigers and and how they moved and 
and how they you know how they mm-hmm. uh, uh, worked and and, and he, I developed a, a complete different mode of speech mm-hmm. um, that would if if an animal could talk if a lion could talk I had to you know develop that oh. and so that was really interesting but yeah um, but I would say maybe a horse a horse okay yeah a horse I could see you know, that I think that they I like I see that I love horses because um, they are very uh, elegant in their own way very strong animals mm-hmm. um and there is a you know the horses are, are mentioned a lot in the mm-hmm. word of god mm-hmm. and so is a lion mm-hmm. you know the lion of judah yes um but um i would say yeah between those two i think yeah. horses yeah. and and, and, and i a can big see that lion. i can see that in that yeah. native heritage coming out of you with the horse as well so thank you for sharing that uh now if there was a book written or a movie made about your life what would the title be Ooh, uh, <laughs> you're hitting me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You'll uh, do fine. <laughs> wow. Uh, always changing. Always changing. Good. Yeah. Good. I guess. And, and I think we, I mean, you have to, you really have to adapt. You have to adapt to so many things in life, whatever life throws at you, whatever, whatever the Lord is saying to you, you have to really be able to adapt and change. And, um, and that's always the challenge, isn't it? Cause change is so hard for us. But I think when you do adapt, when you do change, when you do shift your mode of thinking, you grow mm-hmm. and it strengthens you and it strengthens the people around you, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome, Ben. Thank you. Uh, Well, okay, one final question, Ben. When it's all said and done, how would you like to be remembered? Mm. I guess probably that that I was a good husband, a good father to my children, that I listened to the Lord, that I followed in His footsteps, that I was able to touch lives, um, hopefully inspire others um, as a servant, as someone that um, was not so full of themselves, you know, that they couldn't reach out. Um, I think that's the main thing because I think as a believer, we're challenged to be a good witness. And, you know, I just don't ever want anyone to be thrown off base by something I said or did and um, but more than anything else you've got to be centered in the Lord and you've got to know his plan for your life Um, or we're just running in place you know we're never going anywhere Mm -hmm. you know we got to know what he's saying to us we've got to understand who he is and that's a constant thing we talked about always changing that's something that you have to do every day of your life you've got to seek him you've got to find out what he's saying for that day because every morning is different every day is different and you're going to face new challenges every day so you've got to be there you've got to understand what he's saying to you in that moment in that time and um you know it says in the word of god to to pray without ceasing Mm -hmm. to constantly worship him Mm -hmm. and 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 ask him for direction and i love the scripture that it says and 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 hopefully this is my this is one of my favorite scriptures and 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 i try to pattern my life after it but it says to seek and you will find to knock the door will be open to ask and it will be given to you and those are all action words you know but it has to come from us Mm -hmm. we have to seek we have to Mm -hmm. knock we have to ask and the lord is always there Mm -hmm. but we have to do the seeking the knocking the asking or we're gonna we are gonna be running in place we're not gonna know where to go we're not gonna know what to say or do right because the Lord is right there and he wants to give you those answers and he wants to to give you his heart but but we have to seek knock and ask yes that's great that's great wonderful wonderful well that's that's a great rap ben (laughs) it's been such a delight it's always a delight to interview you and i'm glad that we've had this time together and could uh, have this opportunity to interview you and find out a little bit more about you and your activities and we wish you all the best our prayers are with you and we wish you all the best in your future endeavors thank you for coming by thanks for yourself God bless you and stay tuned for more great interviews coming from the Christian Media Conference.